Well, hello, third grade. Welcome to our second video music lesson. And we're gonna get started right away here. Let's uh, begin with a song that we just learned at the end of our lesson last week. And I said we were going to use it for some, um, use it some more this week. And that is the song that we did called Captain Don't Side Track Your Train. So let's review the words and I will sing part and then you repeat after me. And you may remember we worked on this a little bit last week, how our voice starts low. Captain, don't sidetrack your train down here low. But then the second word, the second sentence, which has the same words, starts up higher. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. All right, so let's try that. Me first, and then you. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Your turn, ready? Higher. Okay, listen. Number three in line, coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. You try it. Number three. Let's sing the whole thing together. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Number three in line, coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Okay, so we're going to add some instrument parts to that today. And some of these things you can make at home or find something that, that works for these instruments at home. So the first one is we're going to use a steady beat and we need something that'll make sort of like a ch sound. So a couple of music class options. One is a drum and if it has a little bit of a rough edge on it, we can slide our fingers along it and make sort of a ch, 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 ch kind of sound. Something else and you can make something like this at home, is one of our egg shakers, and you can make these out of just about anything. In fact, I have one here that is just a little plastic container like you find in your kitchen, and it's filled with rice. That makes a pretty good uh, train sound. So anything like that that you would like to find and, and, and even make and put together is awesome. So we need something to make that kind of sound. The second kind of sound is, uh, oh, I'm gonna use the glockenspiel. And this is actually gonna be for two different parts of the song. Now, there are a couple things you can do if you don't have a glockenspiel or a xylophone type of instrument at home. Number one, you could just get anything that would sound kind of like a bell. I've got a pot, again, from the kitchen, and just a wooden spoon. Ooh, that's kind of loud, but you could do that. Maybe that's a little bit better on the side. Okay, anything like that. Um, I'm going to teach you some specific notes to do on the glockenspiel or xylophone, but again, you don't have to worry about that if you have this, but you could still sing the, the letter names along with us so that you're learning that as well, okay? So here we go. The first one, oh, and by the way, you can pause the video now if you need to go gather instruments to use, and then we will get started. Okay, so we have our scrapey or shaky instrument first, and it's just gonna be a steady beat for the whole song. So we can just get a steady part beat. Let's do that together while we sing the song, ready? Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Number three in line, coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Okay, so that obviously goes the entire time of the song. It does not stop. It just plays on every single steady heartbeat in the song. 
Another part we can add, actually two parts, uh, are going to be on the glockenspiel or any bell type sound that you have. So I'm going to show you the glockenspiel now and explain the two parts to you. Okay, so here's the glockenspiel. And even if you don't have one like this at home, you may have something that is even, you know, like a, a kid's toy. Um, kids get xylophone toys and, and that sort of thing that where you can um, play along with me, even if it doesn't have letter names on it. I'll explain that as well. Or even like a, um, a little kid piano sometimes has this sort of same shape to it and you can play different notes on it. And um, that would be workable as well. So the first thing you're going to need is the letter D. Now, if yours does not have letter names on it, most of the time, it's gonna be the second note from the bottom. Most of the time, the first note is C and the second note is D, okay? And then later on, we're gonna need two Ds. There's a higher D as well. Now, how do we find that one? Well, we go right around the musical alphabet. Now, the musical alphabet ends on G. And after G, you go back to A. So, if I start on this D, after D comes E, F, G, then I go back to A, B, C, D. So I go right around the musical alphabet. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And now I have two Ds that I can play, a low D and a high D. Okay, all right. Now, the first part that we play is only on the low D. And the rhythm is this. Do, day, do, day, do, day, do. And if you're just playing on like on a pot from your kitchen, like I showed you earlier, you can certainly play that rhythm. Even if you don't have the letter name to play, you can play do, day, do, day, do, day, do. And here's how it fits into the song. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. It starts right on the word train. So it's like, Captain, don't sidetrack your do day, do day, do day, do. Captain, don't sidetrack your do day, do day, do day, do. And then this is where we need both D's. Number three in line, coming in on time. And then back to Captain, don't sidetrack your do day, do day, do day, do. This part is sort of like the warning bells. Like maybe the captain's bringing his train in too fast and there are warning bells going off. Okay? So let's try it all the way through. You can get both. If you have a, an instrument like this, like a glockenspiel, you can get both mallets or even if you're using your fingers. Or let's see, what else could you use for mallets? You could use... If you have maybe um, anything soft, any plastic, I wouldn't use anything metal, but plastic forks or spoons, you could use the handle of those and you could play like that, okay? Or maybe something wooden, like, um, like chopsticks, that would be good too. All right, here we go. We're gonna sing and we're gonna play do, day, do, day, do, day, do. Ready? Here. We go. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Do day, do day, do. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Do day, do day, do. Now we need both. Number three in line. Coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. All right. Now, the final one is one that you really would need a glockenspiel or xylophone for. And I want to show you, I'm gonna lift it up a little bit so you can see the letter names clearly. We're gonna be playing this pattern. Mi, mi, re, do, la. Yeah, we're going down to a low la. We've learned that la is one of our higher notes, but there are lower and higher versions of everything. So we're gonna be coming down low to la. Now, we've used these three letter names, A, G, and F, before for me, re, and do. Okay, F is gonna be our do. So if I played the beginning of that, me, me, re, do. That 
that's two of these, right? Mi, mi, re, do. And then la is gonna be that lower D. La, mi, mi, re, do, la. Mi, mi, re, do, la. Can you tell that that's, that sounds like part of the song that we're singing? Number three in line, coming in on time. Mi, mi, re, do, la. Mi, mi, re, do, la. So let's try singing the whole song that way. Ready? Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Here it comes. Ready? Number three in line. Coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Now that's the kind of part that you may need some practice on. So if you need to pause the video or go back and replay some of it and practice it with me again, you can do that. And then if you want to get really fancy after you practice a while, you can put those parts together. So you could go like this on our D's again, but being ready for Mi, Re, Do, A, G, F, you could go like this. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. And then you go to Mi, Re, Do. Number three in line. Coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. So that middle part was Mi, Mi, Re, Do, La. And then I hit both Ds. Mi, Mi, Re, Do, La. Yeah, so you can actually put those parts together. All right, time for you to try it on your own. Okay, so I will play it on guitar and sing it, and you can add any of those parts that you want. And I'm gonna teach you one other little part we're gonna add in between our parts of the song, our main verses of the song, and it goes like this. It's just a little chant that we're gonna say, and it goes like this. Engine, engine number nine, going down Chicago line. If the train should jump the track, do you get your money back? So we're gonna say that in between each time that we play. And what I'd like you to do is pick a different instrument part to play each time. So we will do the song three times with that chant in between. And you get to pick whether you want to do the scraping sound. Engine, engine, or I'm sorry. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Right? Or if you want to do one of the um, xylophone glockenspiel parts. Okay? All right, this takes a little practice to put together, but that's good, it's a little bit challenging for you. Here we go, ready? Pick your part, you can help me sing if you can do both at the same time. Here we go. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Number three in line, coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Here we go with our chant, and you can get ready for your next mu instrument part. Engine, engine number nine, going down Chicago line. If the train should jump the track, do you get your money back? Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Number three in line, coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Here we go again. Engine, engine number nine, going down Chicago line. If the train should jump the track, do you want your money back? Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. Number three in line, coming in on time. Captain, don't sidetrack your train. All right, and again, since it's a video, you can rewind it and you could do that song as many times as you would like. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is something we had started to do in school a couple months ago, and it's a big music word. It's called improvisation. And improvisation is where you are making up music choices as we go along, okay? And we're gonna go back to the beginning of that idea and just start making some little choices. 
So I have some music notes on my board here, or at least lines that are representing music notes. So right now we just have do, 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 shh, right? And we're gonna keep the basics of this pattern together. We're gonna keep this seven do's, or seven heartbeats, I should say, seven heartbeats, and we're just gonna rest at the end. But it's up to you to change one of these do's into due day. It could be anywhere you want. So for example, where's my eraser? There it is. For example, if you just wanted to change the first one into due day, there it is, right? So you could change the first one into due day, and now you have due day do, 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 do. And we'll just keep the last one quiet. But you could put that due day anywhere in here that you want. And actually, it's not something that I want you to write down. I just wanted to give you an example. But now, what we're really going to do with it is make it up in our brains. That's a big part of improvisation, too, is making it up while we go without reading it. So I'm going to say one. I'm just going to put the due day in there somewhere. And when I'm done and I point to you, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to say a whole bunch of do's, but somewhere in there, you're going to put a due day. We're going to go back and forth a couple times with that. Ready? I'll go first. Do, 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 day, do, 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 do. My turn. Do, 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 day. Do, 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 day, do, 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 do. All right, and of course, then you could start adding more due days in there. You could put as many as you wanted. So let's try just mixing and matching. I'll say some, just a whole bunch of do's and due days, and you can say one back to me. And you don't have to add a bunch at first, you can just add a couple. So here's mine. Do, day, do, do, day, do. Do, do, do. Say something different. My turn. Do, 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 day, do, day, do. Do, day, do, day, do, 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 day, do, day, do. and you get to make up whatever you want. So make sure, that's a big part of this too, make sure you're not just repeating what I do. I know in music class, we do that a lot. That's how I teach you to do some things. I show you how to do it and then you repeat after me. But when it's improvisation, you're not doing what I do, you're changing it a little bit. So let's try one more way to do some improvisation. And this is called question and answer when we go back and forth like this. We've been doing question and answer, okay? And that just means one person starts and the other person answers back with a different rhythm. So let's do um, one where we always start the same. And I will show you. Look at the beginning of mine. It's do, day, do. Do, day, do. We're going to start that every time the same. I'll do the question. You'll do the answer. But we will always start our rhythm the same. But the improvisation will be on these last three. Hmm. You could keep them do, do, do. But you could change them to anything you want. Anything you want. Okay? So let's do this for now. I'll just put three blank spots there so you know you have to have something for each of those, either a do or a due day. Okay? I'll go first, you repeat after me. Watch and listen. Do day do, do day do, do day do, do. Your turn. My turn. Do day do, do day do, 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 do day. Do day do, do day do, do day do day do day. Do 
Do they do? Do they do? Do, do, do they? Good. And it can be anything you want. Uh, you can even repeat one that you did before. You can bring it back again. The important thing, though, is remember that you're not repeating me. You're making up your own. So that's improvisation, and we'll be doing more with that in the future. Okay, for our next activity, we're going to do some listening, and we're going to listen to some instruments from the percussion family. I'm going to show you a chart that has a few percussion instruments on it, and we'll talk about what percussion is, and then I will play some examples for you that I want you to listen to, and um, sometimes that your job will be to figure out which of those instruments on the chart you are hearing. So here we go. Okay, so here's our chart, and you can see we have six percussion instruments on this chart. Percussion instruments are any instruments that you hit or shake. We have used percussion instruments a lot in music class. Um, any of our rhythm sticks or maracas or claves or tambourines, those are all percussion instruments because you hit, tap, or shake them. Now what you see on this chart are some orchestra percussion instruments and they're a little bit bigger, too big for us to, to use in our music class, but you can see we have some crash cymbals, we have timpani drums, we have chimes, in the middle we have a xylophone, and then in the lower left we have bass drum, and then finally snare drum. So, Without telling you any more about them, I'm going to play the first musical excerpt for you. And I want you to listen, and there's a couple things. First of all, there is a main instrument that is on this chart that plays right at the beginning of this music and keeps coming back again and again with the main theme. So I want you, first of all, to tell me which instrument is that off of this chart that plays the main theme the most in this music. But as a bonus question, actually two bonus questions, there is a, another percussion instrument that is not on this chart that plays the main theme after the first instrument. So if you know what that instrument is, that's a bonus question for you. And then the final bonus question is later in the recording, there is a non-percussion instrument. It's actually a wind instrument a woodwind instrument that plays a different lead part and I, if you can name that instrument that's bonus for you as well so here we go let's listen together there's the first one there's the second one second instrument that's still playing that lead part as well. Oh, there's the first one again. And the second. Here's that woodwind instrument I talked about. Do you know the name of that one? Okay, well, if you figured out that the lead instrument was xylophone, then you are correct. It has a very um, short wooden sound. We've talked about that in music class before, that wooden instruments have a shorter sound. They don't ring like metal instruments. The second lead instrument was the piano. And yes, the piano counts as a percussion instrument too, because there are little hammers inside of a piano that hit on strings and um, that is a percussive uh, movement, is to hit hammers on strings. So it is at least partly a percussion instrument. And then for the final bonus question, that was a clarinet. The woodwind instrument was a clarinet. 
Okay, and up next, I'm going to play uh, a much shorter piece of music, and this is just one of the instruments on the chart playing solo all by themselves. Okay, any guesses as to which one that would be? It's not something that would be built like the xylophone, is it? No, that is the bass drum. It is very big and round, and it's hard to tell from the picture, but it is, oh, usually a large one is usually like five feet wide. So it is quite big and booming like thunder. Okay, up next I will play just the beginning of a, a musical piece that is meant to sound like a clock. And it starts with the bells of a clock. So which instrument on your chart would this be? Okay, so hopefully when you hear a ringing sound like that, you remember what we've talked about in music class before, that metal instruments ring quite a bit. And so we have two metal instruments that are on our chart. We have the crash cymbals and the chimes, and the correct one is the chimes. And you can see on the chimes picture, those are metal tubes that are, are hanging from a metal frame and each of those metal tubes is a different length. You Maybe you can tell they're longer on the left and shorter on the right. And that's something else you might remember from music class. When you have longer instruments, they produce lower sounds. And when you have shorter instruments, they produce higher sounds. And that's how you can play different levels of chimes, like higher pitches and lower pitches. For our next example, I'm going to play another solo instrument. And at first, you might think this is like the bass drum, but it's a little bit different. Listen. Okay, so another big drum like the bass drum, it's the timpani. And in fact, usually when you play timpani, there are more than one drum. So there could be two, three, four, even five timpani drums all set up beside one another. And the reason you would do that is because there's a pedal at the foot of the timpani drum that you can use to tighten and loosen the head, the thin part of the drum that you hit. And when you tighten and loosen the head of the drum, it can produce higher and lower sounds. So timpani sounds kind of like bass drum, except that it can go boom, 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 and move up and down. Okay, up next, we have a very different sounding percussion instrument. Let's see what you think. So, maybe you guessed that is the snare drum. And the snare drum is usually considered to be like the lead instrument of the percussion section. It usually gets to play the most notes. And in a marching band, you will see snare drummers usually as the ones leading the percussion section of the marching band. And you may have figured out what our final instrument is. And yes, it is the crash cymbals. And instead of an orchestra, playing crash cymbals. I chose a marching band. Um, so this is a marching band crash cymbal solo. And you will hear the other drums playing in the background as well. But they have six, five or six cymbal players all doing this crash solo. Here it goes. <laughs> So 
So there you go. Now I'm going to give you one bonus activity today, and this one isn't even really a music activity, but it's a fun game that I use as a reward around um, St. Patrick's Day in March, but we didn't get to, to do St. Patrick's Day stuff at school, so um, I wanted to teach it to you now. It's kind of like the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. If you've ever played that, you have to go one, two, three, and then you have to show either rock, paper, or scissors, right? And rock beats scissors because it smashes them, and paper beats rock because it covers the rock, and scissors, of course, beat paper because it can cut it. Well, this version is called Leprechaun, Wizards, and Giants, okay? So, you get three choices, and you still count one, two, three, go, but on go, you have to either become a leprechaun, which is jump down real low and put your fists up ready for a little leprechaun fight, or a wizard, where you stand your normal height, but you put your hands out like this and go zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz